So let's talk about sex. One thing we know the internet public likes to do on the internet is talk about sex or do other things. Well, I'm very, very happy that our next speaker is joining us. She's going to talk a little bit about sex. Um, Julie Ravolo is a writer for Forbes.com and currently the digital director for the New York Museum of Sex. Um, but she's also a very good friend, a member of the New York tech community, and now living in Rio. And she has really something very important to tell us about. Hi. <laughs> About every two weeks, someone jumps off Golden Gate Bridge. It's less than one in a million people, but it's enough to make this bridge the most popular suicide destination on the planet. The Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower, St. Peter's Basilica, and a volcano in Japan were all hot spots too, until they put up barriers and the number of jumpers plummeted. But not Golden Gate Bridge, they refused. <laughs> Four foot handrails and killer views. In the bridge's 75-year history, they've rejected ideas for a nine-foot wire fence, safety nets, and high-voltage laser beams. <laughs> they say it'll ruin the view. They say the bike lane barrier was a bigger priority. They cite non-physical barriers like help phones and Officer Kevin Briggs, a motorcycle cop who's talked down over 200 people. The bridge is about beauty, Officer Briggs told The New Yorker. They're going to jump anyway, and you can't stop them. Well, clearly, Officer Briggs hasn't thought about burning the bridge down. Think about it. If there was no bridge, nobody could jump off of it. Maybe they'd find an uglier bridge to jump off of, but I guarantee you there would be no more suicides off of Golden Gate Bridge if we just burned it down. <laughs> I've been told my idea is offensive, escapist, arguably terrorist, and absolutely impossible, but it seems to be working for the anti-sex trafficking movement. Our bridge is Backpage.com, a classified site run by Village Voice Media. They have ads for jobs, rentals, cars, and prostitutes. The problem is, some of those ads are not exactly as advertised. They're posted by criminals looking to advertise minors or victims of sex trafficking. According to uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, they reported 2,695 suspicious ads in 2011 alone. But there are so many adult ads on Backpage for escorts, escorts with pimps, escorts with agencies, male escorts, transsexuals, strippers and strip clubs, dom and fetish, body rubs and adult jobs, that they're making it hard to find the victims. How many ads exactly Backpage isn't saying, but an NGO called Polaris Project, with ingenious methodology, manually counted the number of adult ads on Backpage on certain days this year and came up with 14 to 19,000 ads. So if we take 14,000 ads times 365 days a year, divided by 2,695 suspicious ads, we're looking at something like 1 20th of a percent of the adult ads on Backpage might be advertising something that shouldn't be for sale. <clears throat> That's quite, <laughs> quite a number. So, uh, so, so I've had this problem described to me by one, uh, that's a complete guesstimate, by the way, right? We don't actually know how many victims are out there. Uh, but I had one online sex trafficking re researcher describe it to me as like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So Village Voice has been busy building barriers and safety nets. They've been doing some things like this. They require a credit card, which can be subpoenaed by law enforcement for all adult ads. They have an automated filter system to weed out certain kind of ads. They have real humans manually screening every adult ad twice before they put it up. And they report suspicious ads immediately to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. But why do all that when you can just shut the site down? Which is why the anti-sex trafficking movement, with the support of attorney generals from 46 states, a long list of NGOs and religious leaders, a quarter of a million change.org petitioners, plus Ashton and Demi, Alicia Keys, The Roots, Talib Kweli, and members of REM are all calling for Backpage to shut down. Even Google thinks this is a good idea, indirectly at least. 
They just donated a bunch of money to anti-backpage nonprofit Polaris Project. And you know, they just refuse. <laughs> yeah, Village Voice says if you shut down Backpage, it's just gonna spread the ads over onto other sites and make it even harder to find the victims. They should know they were direct beneficiaries when Craigslist shut down erotic ads in 2009. SF Weekly saw a 569% increase in adult ads in the first week alone. <clears throat> Which is quite a number. So uh, Village Voice says that we should be building barriers instead of burning down bridges. But the anti-sex trafficking movement says they're just saying that to protect their profits. Kirsten Powers at the Daily Beast says, Village Voice knows they're helping sex traffickers sell kidnapped girls, and they don't care. Brad Lander on the New York City Council, the Village Voice should do the right thing and stop profiting from sex trafficking. You know who else is profiting? Goldman Sachs. At least they were, until Nick Kristof at the New York Times revealed that Goldman's held a significant stake in a company notorious for size, ties to sex trafficking for the last six years. Goldman dumped their shares the next day. Although it seems to me that most of what Village Voice is profiting off of is actually ads for prostitution. So are we trying to end sex trafficking or are we trying to end prostitution? Well, it turns out for the leaders of this movement, it's all the same. Mark Lagon, who's the former head of the State Department's Office to Combat and Monitor, monitor and Combat Trafficking in Persons, told Congress, emphasizing that not all prostitution is trafficking is counterproductive. He also once said that sex workers lead nasty, immoral lives, and now he heads up Polaris Project. Tana Benaim at Equality Now explains this logic at a 2008 talk she gave at the Brooklyn Museum with Gloria Steinem. She said, if there were no prostitution, there would be no sex trafficking. If there were no bridges, nobody could jump off of them. See, they say they want to end sex trafficking, a cause every single one of us should be behind. But their strategy to get us there is to abolish prostitution from the face of the planet, <laughs> which is quite a, quite a goal. Uh, they even call themselves the abolitionists. They believe that prostitution, and pornography for that matter, are inherently harmful to women, so we should just get rid of it. <coughs> Can we get rid of it? Well, they certainly tried. It turns out that some of the leaders behind the war on Backpage are the same women who fought to make porn illegal in the 70s. Gloria Steinem, Dorchen Leadholt. They lost that battle to free speech, but that was back before the internet, in the heyday of Hustler and Playboy, when there were less than 90 porn publications in the whole country. So maybe the same strategy will work now on the internet. So I'm going to give attorney generals from 46 states a long list of NGOs and religious leaders, a quarter of a million change.org petitioners, plus Ashton and Demi, Alicia Keys, The Roots, Talib Kweli, members of REM and Google, the benefit of the doubt, and say, let's shut down Backpage. Well, you know, then we're gonna have to go back to Craigslist because the ads are back. They're just popping up in different sections using code words like roses, as in, I wanna suck a dick for some roses, as if we're not gonna know what they're talking about. So I'm um, sorry, Craig, but we're going to have to shut down all of Craigslist this time because who's saying where the roses are going to show up next? Then we're going to have to shut down other adult classified sites like Adult Search, My Red Book, and Eros.com. Next, we should probably take a look at Adult Friend Finder, the world's largest sex dating site with over 40 million members. You're going to tell me all of those women are doing it just because they're slutty? Uh, the college kids are doing it too. So next we're going to have to shut down SeekingArrangement.com, a dating site that's signed up over a hundred, there's a few people who recognize it, they've signed up over a, <laughs> over a hundred thousand college women looking for sugar daddies. Uh, top ten universities as verified by their EDU addresses include NYU, UCLA, and even Harvard, according to Huffington Post reporter Amanda Fairbanks. Uh, I've got bad news for you, because then we're going to have to shut down Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Yellow Pages, and About.com, because there's a research group that found sex ads on all of those sites. Then, uh, then what about black label ads? This is an advertising network. 
uh, financed, by the way, by some of the same venture capitalists between link uh, behind uh, LinkedIn and Google. I used to work for their parent company. Black Label Ads sell, uh, serves over 200 million adult ads a day across over 10,000 sites. How many of those ads are for what? I have no idea. But with over 10,000 times the adult ads that Backpage serves, I'm sure we can find a few of just about anything. By the way, uh, does anyone know what the largest porn site on the planet is? Any guesses? No? It's not RedTube? Pornhub, no, but a lot of people think that. According to Ogi Ogas and Cy Gadam, they're uh, neuroscientists between the large, behind the largest study of sex data on the internet, it's a webcam site called Live Jasmine by a huge margin. Uh, Live Jasmine, according to Dr. Ogas, gets 32 million visitors a month, or almost 2.5% of all internet users. Uh, for the uninitiated, webcams are where you pay for a one-on-one -on -one video chat. Uh, so is that interactive porn or maybe virtual prostitution? How many of those webcam girls might be underage or victims of sex trafficking? Tell you what, there would be none if we just shut down Live Jasmine and all of the other webcam sites on the internet. Then, of course, there's the deep web. Anybody been on the deep web? It turns out there's other internets out there. The deep web is one of them, and it's horrific. There are marketplaces for drugs, chemical weapons, assassins, and enough child pornography to make you lose your faith in humanity. <laughs> so why are we looking for bridges to burn when we could be building barriers? Microsoft says, focusing on whether technology is good or bad misses the point. It's here to stay, and it's imperative that we understand the role it plays. They say they believe we can use technology to help us solve the greatest challenges of our time. So they're funding research projects to figure out how we can use technology as a tool to fight sex trafficking online. They've also got a technology called photo DNA that Facebook is using to comb through more than five million new photo uploads a day for child pornography. It's been described as fast, accurate, and there's no false positives. So you're gonna tell me Facebook can look through five million photos a day for child pornography, but if it's sex trafficking victims, we should just throw the towel in? eBay figured out how to find the counterfeit Prada traffickers. YouTube figured out how to detect copyrighted content traffickers. Match.com is figuring out how to keep sex offenders off the site after one of them date raped a woman last year, although it raises the larger question of how we come to trust strangers online. And Craigslist, Craigslist was doing some really cutting edge stuff before they shut down uh, adult services. They required a credit card and phone verification for every ad. They hired and trained lawyers to manually review all of the ads for illegality and suggestion of underage girls. And they had specialized search interfaces for law enforcement. Dana Boyd at Microsoft said, Craigslist is not a pimp, but a public perch from which law enforcement can watch without being seen. Craigslist was also the only company doing any of this stuff. But why do all of that when we can just shut it down? Craigslist was a missed opportunity. And we're about to miss another opportunity with Backpage, and then another one, and another one. So can we stop playing whack-a-mole with ads for prostitutes and start building some barriers? We just might be able to figure out how to make the internet a safer place for victims of sex trafficking. While we're at it, we might be able to make it a safer place for the other 99% too. Thank you.